previously on the Seegers family Edovitz venture. We took a break from our project and traveled to Nashville, Tennessee. And I am standing in front of the legendary Bluebird Cafe, which my cousin, Brett Lindley, who just kind of popped into the picture back there, um, is playing at tonight. And apparently this is the place to go if you want to be discovered for the country and music western uh, industry. We even had a chance to walk around Fanfare when we ran across DIY Network, who was holding open auditions for a reality show. Both Penny and I tried out, and I made it to the next level of selection. After my Uncle Arnold set us straight on the support for the third floor, other problems started popping up. Some of these posts are going to be right inside of a room. So we cut this wall loose, and we're going to take this wall and then move it out and actually get 14 and 1 fourth more inches inside the bathroom and the closet over there. After we had the post set and the walls moved, Koi and I continued to work on the joists. Hey. What? Get the nails out of your shoes. Sure. Get one at a time. Nice nail holder. <laughs> Koi did everything I asked him to do in order to get the end rewards. Koi, can you guard and guide that? Pull that over. There you go, good job. Thank you. An ice cream treat. Penny then went to Heritage Antique Lumber to see the progress on our kitchen cabinets. We have the, uh, the plywood box the upper cabinets with the adjustable shelving in there. Uh, and then the panels, of course, are made with the barn wood. Uh, this particular panel has a stain on it. Uh, but what we're putting up for you, you are, are these. Uh, this is a natural finish right here. If you like our video series, you'll love our website. Check it out at www.edificeventure.com. See pictures, read blogs, find cool links, plus information and tips to help you get started on your own green, sustainable home improvement projects. Well, we got four kids, a cat, and a dog, and we're looking for an open space where we can stretch our legs and start a new life and build us a greener place. Structure stood with no inner walls and a big hole in the roof. And now it's hard to build the American dream. And brother, this is living proof. A giant labor of love is falling down on County Road 1. But with TLC and nature's harmony, we can keep it from a coming undone. Sponsored in part by Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent, affordable housing with people in need. WVPE 88.1, a NPR station. Inform, entertain, inspire. Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy. And Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. July 21st, 2009. The subfloor was installed on the first third floor loft. The building would have two lofts, one on each side. We decided to save space by building one set of stairs going to the first loft. The first and second loft would be connected by a small lounge area that we would build above the bar. Once the floor plans were on paper, we started to construct the stairs by putting in the stringers. The stringers are the support system for the stairs that you mount the backers and treads to. Of course, after we put the first two stringers up, hindsight revealed a needed correction. All right, we're taking our side stringers off. Found another mistake. Uh, luckily, we caught this before we started putting the treads uh, on the uh, stringers. But if we would leave this as is right now, when we put the drywall up, we would have to cut a stair pattern to make it fit, and that's going to be real difficult. So instead, we're going to take the stringer off, 
and we'll put a board going all the way down at an angle in between the stringer and the wall. That way when we cut the drywall, we only have to cut it at an angle, place it in. It's gonna be a much easier job. Sometimes finding one mistake leads to greater mishaps. Okay, while we were downstairs getting the other one by that we need to attach to the, the uh, left hand stringer, we heard a big thump. And of course we come up and this is what we find. The two stringers, the left and the middle, have fallen down and this is where it landed. And thankfully it doesn't look like it has cracked or broken, but you know, some days are just not the days for the Seegers family Oedipus venture. We finally got the stringers up. Now it was time to put the backers and treads on. Penny came up with a plan to reuse materials from an earlier framing mistake for the construction of the stairs. The third floor that we initially started on the east side of the building, um, we knew was going to have to come down after Uncle Arnold came through. And all the pieces are going to be too short to use on the other side or to reuse on this side. Well, the green treated lumber we'll be able to use on our pergola that we're putting right outside of the deck as our landing to go down to the bigger deck um, out the back patio doors and the old wood I think are gonna look really cool as stair treads that'll be dark wood old and just leave it how it is and then we'll mix it with regular unstained wood and have a dark light contrast and it's gonna look really good the moral of this project story when you make a mistake keep the materials you most likely will find another use for it it's July 27th, 2009. Our kitchen cabinets get installed tomorrow. I thought that I had all the drywall, sanding, muddy. I thought that was all done, but apparently I was severely wrong. And I was here till three o'clock last night. And uh, I'm out here another night trying to get the last little details done. It's probably gonna be another late night. But the good thing is tomorrow, the kitchen cabinets will be installed and I'm sure all this extra trouble I'm going through right now will be worth my while. July 29th, 2009. I was able to complete the preparation for the cabinets the night before, or the morning of, or actually I think it was both. Needless to say, I was operating on very little sleep. After the cabinets arrived, my fatigue was replaced with anticipation to see them fully installed. Not like Christmas, but bigger. One by one, the cabinets were unloaded and moved into place. I was a bit surprised that it took nearly a half hour to unload all the cabinets. Dan and Tim kept unloading cabinet after cabinet from the trailer. I knew our kitchen was big, but after seeing them unload all the cabinets, it gave me a clearer picture how big it really is. I didn't think it would be this many cabinets, did you? Once the cabinets were unloaded, it was time to install them. Basic game plan to start things. We're going to start from this corner with the uppers, work our way around that way, and then we're going to come back through, follow them with the lowers, so that way we can, you know, you don't stand out two foot when you're setting the uppers, you can stand right underneath them to support them, so make your life a little easier when you're doing this. Even with the standard installation plan, life installing our cabinets wasn't easy at all. What do you think about the uh, squareness and levelness of this building? You don't want to know. <laughs> Square? Well, we're probably helping with what we're doing. Shim shims are a pretty good investment on this job, we just say that. And that's why we hired someone to do it for us. As the cabinets went in, Tim would show us cool features that he and Dan had worked into our kitchen. Did you guys see your pan cabinet on the bottom of your oven? Mm -hmm. We got a little pan drawer there for you. Ah, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Penny's favorite portion of the kitchen was an open face shelf that had storage containers made from the tin roof from a barn. I really like them because they can be used as vegetable bins. I can put open bags of chips in there. I can put all kinds of things that are still kind of in the packaging, but stuff that's also out of the packaging. So what makes the barn tin give it that like brown color? Well, actually, uh, Mother Nature takes care of most of that for us. So you can actually see if you get close up with the camera and you get the sh light off from all them pits, those are like rust spots. Well, this is galvanized tin, but we took a wire wheel, wet scraped all that off. So the, the color we got left, if we put our lacquer on top of it, you still get the that rust color kind of embedded into the metal. 
Dan and Tim Sisworda of Heritage Antique Lumber are second to none when it comes to taking wood and metal roofs from old barns and turning the weathered materials into beautiful kitchen cabinets. If you recall from our last episode, Penny and I recently got back from a trip to Nashville, Tennessee. While there, we tried out for DIY Network's Stud Finder 2009 show special, and I actually moved to the next round of judging. At about 3 p.m. during our kitchen installation, I received a call from DIY Network informing me I was chosen as one of the top four. I would now be heading to Newark, New Jersey to compete in becoming DIY Network's next show host. I have to admit, I was having a pretty good day. The cabinets were installed, and I got a call from DIY Network. Since the early 1960s, Texture Fine Insulation has been an environmentally friendly product. Our unique process diverts millions of pounds of fiberglass scrap from landfills each year. Today, high quality standards have made Anko Products a world class industry leader in high tensile strength, resilient insulation products. Anko Products include laminated metal building insulation, insulated flexible duct system, and indoor air quality, Green Guard certified Texture Fine Insulation. Green isn't a new initiative, we started in the 60s. Anko Products, our energy saves you energy. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County does more than build houses for those in need. They provide education on personal finance, homeownership, parenting, and other life skills to help those moving into these houses turn them into homes. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, working with people from all walks of life to build simple, decent, affordable homes. For more information on how you can help, visit www.habitatec.com. July 29th, 2009, continued. At this time, we had been working on the building for four years, and Penny never once during that time got the nerve up to use a power tool. She only committed herself to measuring, pulling, and hammering in nails by hand. But on this day, she decided it was time for her to brave the usage of power tools. Her first power tool to master was the skill saw. I knew she was a little nervous from her disregard to safety. Safety glasses should be on your eyes, not on your head. Of course, I had to add to her stress and fears by oh! yelling loud. Wait a minute, she didn't even flinch. She then moved on to the table saw, and again I had to add to her stress. Ah! Hmm, again she didn't flinch, ah! but she did forget the safety glasses. She even gave the nail gun a shot and forgot her. What? I have to say she brought a tear to my DIY eye when she handled the reciprocal saw like a pro with her glasses on. So how did she feel about power tools now? It wasn't too terribly bad. I'm still a little afraid of some of the power tools. <laughs> I still have all my fingers. I got all mine too, see? <laughs> I finally figured out what I was doing wrong. What I originally done is I took all the white wires and uh, crimped them together, and I took all the black wires, crimped them together with pigtails hanging up, and then I put those on the switches, which caused a short circuit, and we kept breaking the uh, breaker. So what I should have done is the main power comes in, the hot goes to the first switch, and then you crimp the two hot wires together. Basically, it needs to be a hot to a hot. Yeah, sure. Let's take it to the graph paper and explain what happened and how I fixed it. What I was trying to do was wire a switch from the main power source to a light. Here is what I originally had done. I used wire nuts to connect the black wires which are hot with a pigtail and did the same for the white neutral wires. I connected the copper or ground wires together with a ground nut, again leaving a pigtail. I then connected the hot pigtail to the bottom screw of the switch and the neutral pigtail to the top and the ground wires to the ground screw. Of course, when I flipped the switch, I blew a circuit. The only correct thing I did was connecting the ground wires. Here is how I rectified the problem. I first killed the power and disconnected the hot and neutral wires. I left the ground wires alone. Like I said, that was okay but one out of three is not a passing score with the inspector. 
The hot wire for the main power source should have been connected to the bottom screw of the switch. The hot wire running to the light is connected to the top screw and the neutral wires are tied together with a wire nut and the ground wires connected to the ground screw. Now the switch will turn on or turn off the light without popping the breaker. When attempting any wiring, always check your codes and have it inspected by someone else. Pick up a book on wiring. It makes a handy reference guide. But don't lose it. I found it. If you can't find it, you won't be able to reference it. Oh, good job, Bubba. You found the uh, wiring book, but I already figured out what my problem was. What? I already fixed it. But thank you. Stay tuned to the Seegers Family Edifice Venture when we return more electrical mayhem. Heritage Antique Lumber is a small, family-run business. We reclaim lumber and we turn it into something you can be proud of and you will be happy with. The uniqueness of our cabinetry is one of a kind. Heritage Antique Lumber makes furniture, crafts, mirrors, frames, and more using reclaimed barn wood. We at Heritage Antique Lumber consider ourselves more than just craftsmen. We are also artists. Visit our website and see our quality, heritageantiquelumber.com. 88.1 WVPE Public Radio is a vital communication resource that strives to inform, entertain, and inspire. National Public Radio is an internationally acclaimed producer and distributor of non-commercial news, talk, and entertainment programming. WVPE serves local listeners with a distinctive blend of national and local programming and annual events. In 2008, WVPE launched a sustainability initiative which includes green events and programs. Learn more at WVPE.org. August 6, 2009. Fellow Army Reservist Sergeant Jolly came over to help. It's bad. I still call him Jolly like we're in the Army and stuff. I can call him John by his first name, but it's a habit. Our mission? Putting electricity in here. And what we're doing right now is actually hooking up the lights. And the purpose of said mission? Because he wants lights on in the house. Unfortunately, the lights of choice were wrong. They had hung an ugly, really ugly can light in my office. And she's weenie whining around that she doesn't want one of these can lights or recess lights in our office. Absolutely under no circumstances was I putting a can light in my office. We argued about that for a while. and I already have some sort of like Victorian theme with a roll top desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the stupid can light out. A can light would just look hideous with that. So he took it down. So she can have some type of fancy dancy artsy artsy design light. And I won. Whatever. I can neither confirm or deny she won, but the recess light or can light in her office did come down. While we're on the subject of electricity, here's a quick tip on setting receptacle boxes. Make sure that I got proper distance of this sticking out. I'm actually just taking the drywall thickness, which is a half inch drywall, what I'm using, and I'm using that to help set my boxes so that I make sure that I'm getting the proper depth. They do have marks on the boxes here that can help you set the boxes on the wall, but it's really hard to see those thin little lines. September 5th, 2009. We continued to run wire for all the electricity for the third floor. Penny also continued to learn how to use the power tools. On this day, she attempted to drill her first hole through not just one 2x4, but three 2x4s with a spade bit. She gave it her best shot, but about halfway through she got tired and asked me to finish the task. Okay, so I kind of wimped out and couldn't finish the complete hole, but at least I got it started for Warren and I gave it my best and a good shot, so I have to be rewarded at least for the effort. Drilling all the holes was in preparation to hook up the three-way switches for the upstairs hall lights. There are three basic types of switches, two, three, and four-way switches. Each is different in its design, wiring, and purpose. A two-way switch can turn on or turn off a light from one location. 
A three-way switch consists of two three-way switches that can turn on or turn off a light in two separate locations. A four-way switch works in conjunction with two additional three-way switches allowing you to turn on or turn off a light from three locations. September 7th, 2009. As I said earlier in the program, we had been working on the building for about four years. And it had been almost four years since we last did any yard maintenance. Well, other than mowing the grass. So we spent the day clearing debris and pulling weeds with the help of our friends, Mike and Nate Goodwin. While my oldest daughter, Jory, was doing her area beautification, she stumbled across a caterpillar. And of course, it totally distracted her from the task at hand. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what are we gonna name him? Our caterpillar's name is Pumpkin. Are we gonna name him Halloween because orange and black? <laughs> He's running. He's running. Go, go! <laughs> He's going to Cancun like my other caterpillar. This concludes season one of the Seegers Family Edifice Venture showing the highlights of our sweat equity in a four year period. I know we're not done, but don't worry, we'll show more in season two. The Seegers Family Edifice Venture is sponsored in part by Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent affordable housing with people in need. WVPE 88.1, a NPR station. Inform, entertain, inspire. Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy. And Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. <laughs>